Hey there guys, so my Ryzen 9 3900X for some reason seems to have died and I'm trying to figure out why. So this is a test bench that I just pretty much put together to try to figure out why exactly it died. Now this isn't something that happened recently, in fact it died quite a while ago. It ended up dying pretty much a month into me switching over to an i9 12900K full time. I pretty much just had this chip in its original motherboard which was a msi x470 gaming pro carbon i believe so a very nice board to pair with the 3900x and i used it with that for years you know it was my main cpu that i started this channel with and i just had it set up in a test rig and i was just randomly running a game on a graphics card it kind of just died i came back to it off and ever since i tried to turn it back on it has not worked so so I took the Ryzen 5 3600 that was paired with this ASRock, what I believe is a B550 Pro 4 motherboard. I don't believe it's the B450 version, but I've had this board for years now and it was just sitting in a closet. So I took the 3600 that was in here. I paired it with that motherboard that I had before, put it into a system and eventually ended up selling it. And this has kind of just been sitting in my closet, kind of like this for a while. And I've decided to finally take it out and deal with this for two main reasons one i need this space so i gotta get rid of this motherboard in some capacity if i have to sell it individually if i put it together with a cpu motherboard combo or if i pull it into a full system i'll have to figure that out for right now i just need to figure out what's wrong with this cpu and i'm pretty sure it's the cpu because i did already mess around with this how could i not and uh, everything that i tried didn't seem to work i swapped around the motherboard i tried the 3600 on both boards it worked perfectly fine the 3900x is not working on either board so i'm to the point now where i'm going to take off this cooler and i'm going to just try to run the system just to see if it gets hot because i want to know if there's any power even going to the cpu or not now i also did end up picking up some upgrades for this just in case and they're not really upgrades it's more things that i get to use as a chance to mess around with this by the way this is a gtx 1660 super so pretty ancient card but i really just had it there to be a display out now if i'm being honest i have very little faith that we'll be able to salvage this thing i think the 3900x is uh it's definitely dead but i'm gonna try some stuff just to see if that will help of course now that we have this thing out we might as well take it out and reseat it inspect those pins see if there's anything wrong there and there you can see it right there the 3900x Not this thing out oh, looking at it in the light i can't really see anything wrong with it you know seems pretty pristine to me now it's very light Likely not anything wrong with the socket itself because again I swapped around the CPUs and it worked with the other CPU I'm gonna be putting in the RAM and this is just RAM that was in its original configuration so it's 64 gigabytes of RAM a little overkill for a budget motherboard like this but do keep in mind that it was on a higher-end board before and we'll get the graphics card in here now I just need to get a power supply luckily I have this turn laying around it's not exactly a great power supply but it gets the job done for essentially powering on something like this especially since it's very low power the 3900x while it's booting up does not utilize much power at all even at full utilization it was really never much of a power hog for the level of performance that it was giving all right so it should be turning on now okay the chip feels like it's heating up it definitely it's definitely heating up yeah okay that cpu is definitely heating up so it's getting power all right, screw it. I'm going to just put the cooler back on. All right, so I'm just going to switch over to the display capture, or at least I'm going to start it on the laptop so we can see if it even boots up at all. All right, so it's boot cycling right now. Problem is, is with this board, I don't really have any kind of indicator on there being an issue, which is uh, one of the big downsides of switching over to this board in comparison to its previous board, which to be fair, its previous board didn't exactly have the best setup either 
either. It just had these LED lights that would say CPU VGA, and it wasn't really that great of an indicator of any issues. Yeah, no, it just says no signal uh, still on the display and the capture card. I mean, the pins are perfect. I know the socket is perfectly fine because I've already swapped out into it. It uh, it just, it seems to be boot looping. I, uh, I can't really figure out what could be the problem here. Well, I mean, at this point, I'm kind of out of options, really. I don't think that we're going to get this thing to work. I was thinking maybe brushing the pins on the CPU with uh, alcohol, maybe like as a last ditch attempt to see if there's any debris or anything that might be causing issues. But that really just seems like copium more than anything else. So luckily, earlier today, I went over to Micro Center. And again, I promise I'm not sponsored by Micro Center. I wish that would be incredible. I'm just a very frequent customer of theirs. And uh, I ended up seeing that they had the Ryzen 7 5700X right here. And this thing on sale for $105, making it pretty much the best price that I could find for an eight core and even a six core based off of Zen 3. Since, you know, there's no reason to go with Zen 2, Zen 3 at this point is cheap enough that, I mean, this this was a no-brainer. My move was going to be to pick up a 5600X on AliExpress, but uh, suddenly that has just not become as good of a move, though it's mostly due to this. Uh, th this was kind of just a surprise sale. Uh, I think Micro Center, after going there this last month and spending over $1,000, I think they threw me a bone there. So, uh, you know, shout out to Micro Center for this deal. You know, really, part of me was thinking that I just pick up something like the 5500, slap it in here, throw the GTX 1660 Super with it, and just some cheap 16 gigabytes of RAM, and kind of just put it in a cheap case and sell it off because I do need to clear out some space. I'm, uh, I'm thinking of setting up a shop where I can sell you guys some of the uh, stuff that I have laying around because I have so many things at this point that it is becoming a nightmare to deal with. All right, so let's just clean off the old chip and pop it out. I'm still going to mess around with it, so I'm going to try to keep it in good condition. I'm going to see if eventually I can either get this thing to work, and if not, I'll probably just turn it into some kind of decoration since, again, it is what I started this channel with. You know, this was my first editing PC for the channel. Not my first editing PC in general, but it is the one that I had when I started this channel. So, you know, this chip has been with me for quite a lot of videos quite a lot of time so i'd rather you know just commemorate it instead of just letting it go into a landfill all right and let's get this bad boy out and socket it in and uh, we'll just put the old chip in here uh, I don't think I'm realistically going to need much more than this, but I'll take a look at the temperatures and if they do end up being pretty high, I might just end up putting either a thermal right cooler or I might just take that ICE 400 SC cooler that we took a look at with that 16 core processor and I might just put that on here. If it was keeping a 16 core processor cool, I think it'll handle these eight cores perfectly fine. All right, so I got the new CPU in there and before we boot this thing up and I know that I'm introducing a new variable here and it's only inevitably going to cause issues but I'm kind of excited to take a look at it and well that is not this this is uh this is a little misleading let me explain why. See, a buddy of mine just uh, ended up going to Micro Center recently. And again, not sponsored, just uh, just frequent customers. But he went to Micro Center and he ended up picking up a GTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabytes. Not exactly the greatest value graphics card in the market, but a solid upgrade over what he previously had. And what he previously had was a 
very, very dusty RTX 2070 Super. And uh, I'm excited to try this thing out because a 2070 Super is effectively the same as a 2080. The performance difference between the 2080 and the 2080 Super was about 5 to 8%. So effectively, they were the same thing. And so this should be a pretty noticeable performance upgrade in comparison to that 1660 Super. And while I'd love to clean this thing up, it is still very damp outside and I do not want to be out there with a piece of electronics like this. But at this point, I do have quite a bit of tech that I need to take outside and blow the absolute crap out of because they are just filled with so much dust. You know, it's wild how much dust collects over the years just of running a computer. That's nice. He actually even has uh, the uh, graphics card cover things. I wonder if they're from the new card. But yeah, so shout out to my friend Mal for lending me this just to take a look at it. I'm not going to be keeping it, but I do want to just test it out. So again, shout out to him for lending me this. All right, so we got it booting up. Let's see if we get an image. Oh, yep, we got an image out. We have, of course, a new CPU installation. So obviously the TPM stuff is going to be corrupted. So hopefully I don't have any of the bit locker crap enabled. I'm going to I'm gonna check that right now. All right, absolute perfection. We're booting up into Windows right now. So I just need to get drivers installed for the GPU and I more than likely do need to update the chipset drivers since it has been quite a bit since I've last used this. So I'm going to run through all that and we're going to see what the performance of this setup right here even is. Now that I have everything installed and set up and ready to go, we can start testing and we're not going to take a look at a super extensive list of games just because the configuration as it is right now has a few problems that need to be fixed. Specifically the fact that the memory is capped at 2666 speed because unfortunately this motherboard will only support RAM that will cap out at 1.3 volts so I need some slower speed RAM with a lower voltage for this system so I'm just gonna order some used RAM online but we're gonna see how it is in this configuration. I might end up downgrading this CPU on this motherboard later down the line. So I ran all the games at 1440p because it seemed the most appropriate for a setup like this though realistically if I had a 2070 Super right now I'd stick to 1080p but at 1440p in a game like Rainbow Six Siege the result was as you would expect pretty spectacular we're gonna start off with the easiest games first and then we're gonna move up in terms of how heavy they are but clearly the Ryzen 7 5700X and the 2070 Super are a perfect pairing for each other which makes sense they're essentially from the same era and this would have been a very great gaming setup to have back in the day of course again that ram just being the only limiting factor Next up is, of course, Counter-Strike running with the lowest in-game graphics settings. And interestingly enough, the 1% lows seem to struggle the most here. Though the FPS average was well within the range that you would expect, it also wasn't exactly the most ideal. And I suspect that this is one of those titles that would benefit the most from a RAM upgrade, but we'll have to see that later down the line. But still, the performance here is more than ideal and is going to give you a great result. You pretty much would have to have a very expensive model monitor to realistically run into any issues here. Now I threw Mountain Blade Banner Lord in here for me. You already know at this point that I'm just obsessed with this game so I always want to test it on everything. But this also gave me a chance to try out a new feature in the Nvidia app and that is the fact that you can essentially update what version of DLSS any game that has DLSS 2 and above is using. And of course Mountain Blade happens to support DLSS and I tend to use it but mostly at the quality setting. And well with the new performance and well with the new transformer model i decided to give it a go and with the latest model that they have the quality at the performance preset is honestly fantastic i know that this comes with a bigger performance hit at least from everything that i've seen online but honestly it seems pretty worth it it looks great and the performance here is absolutely spectacular and if you see we're actually cpu limited here so the gpu is being held back by the cpu here so that really shows shows what DLSS is able to unlock for us here. 
So as I was testing out Helldivers, I completely forgot that I just used the default recommended settings that it wanted to go with. So it's essentially a custom preset and it seems to be a mix of medium and high settings. And of course, I did use the render scale set to ultra quality. So we're not running at native 1440p. And the performance like this was decent enough with an FPS average of 51 and 1% lows of 43. It's not a high refresh rate gaming experience, but it is consistent and that's really what you want if you're gaming. I think that because this isn't a competitive shooter, it can be more forgiving with the FPS as long as things stay smooth. You know, minor fluctuations are no problems, but if we're seeing major spikes that end up turning those frame times into these massive spikes or waves, then it's unusable. But like this, it's more than doable. Marvel Rivals has proven to be a surprisingly heavy title. And well, when I ran the game, game on this system, I wanted to see what the optimized recommended settings would be, and it shows medium, which was very surprising to me. But I decided to go along with what it recommended, and it does seem to be the right choice for it, considering that we're also using DLSS here at the performance preset. And I think that this is one of those titles that really works well with DLSS at performance. The art style, for some reason, just seems to lend itself better to the reduction in quality and the upscaling honestly looks great. Not once while playing the game did I feel like the resolution was a problem. And the performance here was overall pretty great. Though not as high refresh rate as you would expect considering that we're using DLSS at performance. But that just shows you how heavy this title is. And the last game that I took a look at was Spider-Man 2 running at the high graphics settings and we were using DLSS at the performance preset. And well, this is one of those games where this card is, I guess, lucky to even have DLSS, especially with the updated version. Because with an FPS average of 67 and a 1% low of 33, it's definitely a playable experience, but it shows that we had to go pretty aggressive with the rest resolution here. Thankfully, visually speaking, it didn't really do too much, and we were still able to use the high graphics. You can't go up to very high, but then you're really going to be pushing your FPS, and you might even have to push your FSR, your, and you might even have to push your DLSS setting to ultra performance, and at that point, you might not like the quality unless you're using a 4K display. Well, this is a pleasantly great combo together in all honesty. It makes sense. The 5700X was around when the 2070 Super was a, you know, relevant mainstream card. But it's great to see that they've also aged really well. Sure, a lot of the titles that we took a look at here today aren't exactly the newest titles, but they are very relevant titles. And even in newer titles, it still holds up as long as you're just going to be sticking to using DLSS and not trying to use ray tracing or anything like that. And look, personally, I find DLSS to be the best RT feature, or I guess you could say RTX branded feature that was ever added. Because ray tracing, path tracing and all that, sure, it looks good, but it's never worth the performance hit. It would have to be non-existent for me to really consider ever messing with those features. But DLSS, especially with the recent updates, and those recent updates that let you use use the updated model on an old card like this, that pretty much makes the experience great because now using DLSS at the performance preset or ultra performance preset on pretty much any system is not a problem anymore. And that kind of means that this graphics card just saw a performance bump because when realistically you could only use it for things like quality or balance or go down to performance but really take a visual hit, you can either improve your visual quality or improve your performance by being able to go down a tier or multiple tiers in DLSS, especially since you're able to inject it into games now directly through the NVIDIA driver. It's just a shame it doesn't work with DLSS 1 games because I would love it if Monster Hunter World would let me inject a more up-to-date DLSS version into it. But I'm going to be messing around with this setup a bit more, so you are going to see all this again, maybe in a case, maybe not, it all depends. But 
but I do have a project in mind that might very well be the very next thing you see after this. I do need to order different RAM for this since you know the pair that I have there is only running at 2666 though realistically I don't know if I'm going to be able to find RAM that will run faster than that on this board so we might be stuck there. But anyways I'll catch you guys in the next one.